Final Cut Pro is dead. Premiere Pro, also dead. Or are they? I mean, right now, it seems like literally everyone is switching to DaVinci Resolve. And of course, everyone's also making the obligatory I'm switching to DaVinci Resolve, here's why video. Now, great videos, interesting videos also, Donny Fun. But I'm gonna tell you the real reason why everyone's switching to DaVinci Resolve 18 or 18.5. And no one has mentioned this in their video yet. But I'm gonna tell you, okay? But no, seriously, it's really important to know if you're also considering making the switch from Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. But first, something else. And also first, I have to put my hat on because it's not working today. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Audio. Okay, a lot better. So first I wanna tell you why I made the switch from Premiere Pro to Resolve three, four years ago and why I love it so much, what my favorite features are, features and tools that I use almost every day because you know, I'm also glad that so many people are finding their way to the Resolve community. And maybe I can convince you too. Because in my opinion, Blackmagic Design is really crushing the competition at the moment. And there are so many reasons, good reasons, why people are switching. Here's the first one. First of all, it's free guys. It's free. I mean, don't you like your money in your pocket instead of Adobe's pocket? Yeah, right? And you can get really far with just the free version. Professional video editing, no problem. The first one and a half, two years running this channel, I was using the free version. Version. It's a dangerous word for me. Virgin version. Anyway, I didn't miss or need any features that you get when you buy the studio version. Not at all. So for most of you, the free version is all you need. It really is. I'd say the only reason why you should go for the studio version is if you shoot a lot of 10-bit footage. The free version doesn't support 10-bit footage. And then there's also some features like noise reduction, some effects, but it's mostly things that you don't really need, especially if you're a beginner. And if you do, well, then it's still just a one-time fee, 295 bucks, that's it, you're good to go. Now, like I said, when I started to learn how to make videos and video editing, I was using Premiere Pro. And in my opinion, it's one of the most frustrating editing programs ever. I don't even know how many times it crashed on me and after two months I was like okay I'm gonna have to do something or I stop making videos or I have to find another editing program. And luckily I found DaVinci Resolve. Now does that mean that DaVinci Resolve never crashes? No of course not but I can't remember the last time it did. Well actually no that's not true. I can remember the last time it did because now it has that new relight feature and well, I tried it, but every time I try it, Resolve crashes. So yeah, I don't know what's up with that. And well, I don't know what to do because it seems like no one else has that problem. And they've also released a few updates already, but it's still crashing on me. So yeah, I don't know. But other than that, it's super stable. Wow, great start of the video. Stability, crashing. Yeah. No, it's super stable guys. My Mac Studio in combination with DaVinci Resolve is ugh, smoothest experience ever. It really is. And talking about new features like Relight for example, well that's another good reason to make the switch. Blackmagic Design is really building and making it better year after year. Adding new features, AI, you can feel that they're taking it super serious. So you don't have to worry for the future. Like that new Relight feature that everyone's talking about. It seems amazing. I wish I could use it. But anyway, there's also cloud editing that allows you to collaborate with other people from anywhere in the world and work on the same project. There's also voice isolation. I showed you how to do it in CapCut a few videos ago and CapCut does a decent job. But of course, Resolve takes it to a whole other level. Check it out. Looks great. The shades of blue are... Whoa, I almost died. Laja Sosua, looks great. The shades of blue are... Whoa, I almost died. And once you've removed the noise from your video, you can add music, of course. And the music I'm using lately is from Audio, the sponsor of this video. All the music in this video 
is from audio and what I like about audio, what I love about it, besides the fact that the music is high quality, the website's super user friendly, just use and combine the filters and you'll find exactly what you're looking for. But what I also like is that their music sounds fresh. You know, I used to have this problem with other platforms that I started to hear the same music everywhere. Everyone using the same old songs. You know what I mean? Like IKEA furniture. Everyone has that same coffee table from page 24, right? But now with audio, it just sounds fresh. I like it. And their license covers an unlimited amount of downloads for your content, including personal and client projects. And right now you get 70, I repeat, 70% off the first year if you use the link and my code in the description. Great deal. Go check them out. And thank you so much, Audio, for sponsoring my video. Super nice people also. Now, look, keep in mind that I've only used Premiere Pro for two months. So there's not really anything that I miss. Features that Premiere Pro has. Because Resolve is pretty much all I've known for years now. So, you know, keep that in mind because I can't really compare. Like how the timeline behaves, for example. I know some people really prefer Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, but what I like about Resolve is that there's the normal looking timeline in the editing page, and then there's a different one in the cut page. And the timeline in the cut page is designed for fast work, fast cutting. But I've also heard people say that they do everything in the cut page or everything in the edit page. So, you know, you can use whatever you want. And now let me show you some of my favorite features and tools. Tools and features that I use on a daily basis. And most of them are available in the free version. First of all, there's tracking. And I use tracking a lot in my videos. Usually it's to stick text to an object, like my finger here. So, you know, the text follows an object. That's one of the most basic use cases. But you can also track surfaces like textile and put a logo on a t-shirt, for example. Looks super cool. Not sure if that one's available in the free version, actually. But basic tracking definitely is. There's also planar tracking that will also take perspective and scale in account. Super cool. I used it here for this fake commercial uh, for my Mac Studio. And I don't know how tracking works in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, but in DaVinci Resolve, it's easy. Once you know how it works, you can literally stick text to an object in under a minute. And same with putting text behind an object. DaVinci Resolve also makes that super, super easy. I made a video a while ago on how to do it, but that was more the manual way. Because, you know, I also want you to know also how it's done manually first before you use all the new features that do it automatically for you. You have to understand the basics first. But anyway, now they have this magic mask and you just have to draw over an object in the color page and then Resolve automatically makes a mask and you can put text behind the subject. You're done. What they've also added now, finally, automatic captions. My God, what a lifesaver. You don't want to know how much time I wasted on doing that manually or trying it with third-party plugins. But now it's literally one click of a button and you're done. I use it mainly for my shorts or Instagram Reels. And for all of you who are making shorts, by the way, and maybe you're making horizontal long videos and shorts or Reels, you can use the Reframe tool. So you can just use your horizontal video and turn it into a vertical video and Resolve will automatically reframe constantly to keep the subject in the frame of your vertical video. DaVinci Resolve also has a few cool animated titles built in and definitely some really cool built-in effects. A few videos ago, I showed you the analog damage effect. That's this effect right here and it's super cool. I think it's even available in the free version. Not sure. Let me know in the comments and then I'll pin your comments if, you know, if it's not available in the free version. So there's a lot of cool titles, animated graphics built in, but what I like even more now, now that Resolve is getting so popular, is the fact that they're offering more and more plugins for Resolve. And with they, I mean, you know, websites where you can buy plugins. All those websites used to focus on Final Cut and Premiere Pro, but now that Resolve is on the rise, you can find a lot of cool stuff for Resolve too. And more and more is coming every month. Motion VFX is my favorite one. All the titles and motion graphics that I use, Motion VFX. But like I said, Resolve is getting so popular now, you can find them anywhere. Google is your best friend here. And then there's of course the one feature that Resolve is famous for. 
Color grading. Color grading is something else in Resolve, it really is. It does take some time to get used to if you're coming from Final Cut or Premiere Pro. You'll have to get used to the new user interface of course, but also nodes. And nodes are similar to layers, like in Photoshop for example. And each node is a graphical representation of a correction. It allows you to come up with all kinds of different looks and it also helps you to stay organized because in some nodes you can, for example, put an effect and then in another node you can put a color correction. It's really powerful once you understand how it works. Adjusting skin tones, for example. You can do it super accurate and you always have full control over what happens. My workflow usually is to first make a mask of the skin the face, whatever, and then layer the skin on top of another node so that you can adjust your image in one node, do a heavy color grade for example, but that heavy color grade won't affect the skin tones. Or you can decide yourself how much it will affect the skin tones because, you know, you don't want the skin to turn too green or something. And there are so many tools and features and effects to your disposal. Now, there's a learning curve, there is a learning curve, of course, but once you understand how it works with the nodes and everything, I don't think you're gonna wanna go back. Gonna wanna, yeah. And it's just fun to experiment and try to make your own looks, your own color grades. That's why I make so many DaVinci Resolve color grading videos, because it's just fun. But actually, it's not just for fun. Now, now we're getting to the real reason here. Now, first I want to say that everything I've said in this video and everything other creators say about DaVinci Resolve, it's true and there are good reasons to make the switch. But there's another reason why everyone's making the switch or why it seems like everyone's making the switch. And no one's telling you this, but I will. You want to know what it is? Well, it's just because DaVinci Resolve is really, really popular right now and videos with DaVinci Resolve in the title get a lot of views. It's as simple as that. And that's why you see all these videos popping up about switching to DaVinci Resolve. It's popular, it's a hype almost, and everyone just wants to cash in on the views. That's why you also see videos like why I'm not switching to DaVinci Resolve. And that's totally fine, of course. There's nothing wrong with that. I also want a lot of views. And I also make videos on trending topics. AI, for example. You know, it's my job. I need views here. But just take a look at this screenshot from Google Trends. This is what's happening right now with the keyword DaVinci Resolve in YouTube search. Crazy, right? And this is Final Cut Pro, for example. Yeah, so Resolve is a hot topic and it's getting a lot of views. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's switching just for the views, guys. Of course not. But look, if I would be a YouTuber making videos on Final Cut Pro and I would see this and then this and all the views and the attention that Resolve is getting right now, I mean, I would also be like, hmm, maybe I should just give it a try and make some videos about it. If that's the demand right now and if it's really that good, why not? And you know, videos about switching from something to something else and YouTube go together like peanut butter and jelly. So yeah, there's a snowball effect going on right now. But it's a combination of hype, getting views and resolve just getting better and better every year. But what you should always remember guys, and this is important, if for example next year Final Cut Pro is crushing it, a lot of YouTubers will switch back to Final Cut Pro and make a video about it because that video will get a lot of views and attention. That's just how it works. And you know, it's also easier for YouTubers to make a switch like that because in a way we're getting paid for it, trying out things and then sharing our opinion and experience. But yeah, so I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here because I feel like a lot of words are coming out of my mouth but I don't know if they're making sense. I feel like I'm on auto speech or auto talk or something. <sighs> now, why am I saying all this? Well, because you don't have to switch or you don't have to feel like you're missing out on something. This is YouTube, always remember that. It's a distorted view on reality. Do you remember Vero, the Instagram killer? A few months ago or last year, I also made a video about Vero. All of a sudden there were Vero videos everywhere. And I also made one because, first of all, I thought it was interesting, but I also saw that those videos were getting a lot of views. But now, Vero, Vero who, Vero what? Does it still exist? That's YouTube. So it might seem now like 
you're gonna have to switch or you're gonna miss out, but that's not true. If you're happy editing in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro and you don't have any complaints, it's not frustrating, then you don't have to switch, of course. Because let's be honest, switching is difficult. If you've been using Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro for years and years and you've built your whole workflow around it, it's gonna be difficult to switch to a new editor. And so if you don't have any real complaints, why switch, right? Just because creators are making a video that they're switching? Nah. Now, of course, I'm gonna end by saying it's free, so it doesn't hurt anyone or your wallet to just give it a try. I always recommend it to anyone asking me for a good free editor. So yeah, I do it for the views. I started making more DaVinci Resolve videos when it was getting popular, sue me. But it also really is a great, great editor. Okay, that's about it. Wow, how long is this video? And I hope it's gonna get a lot of views because, yeah, otherwise everything I said now, hmm. Yeah, anyway, it's never a guarantee here on YouTube. Damn you mighty YouTube algorithm. Okay, yeah, see you in the next one. Salut.